Okay, so I'm here on a little walk here in the neighborhood, and I'm starting to notice something that's becoming a little bit more prevalent here this time of year. And that's this right here. See that? What this is, is dog urine. And I can understand the confusion with everybody right now, because we've all grown up with the idea of, well, dog urine, that's actually more of an acidifier for the soil. So if a dog pees in the lawn, wouldn't that lower the pH of the soil, thus killing that one spot of the lawn? Well, that's kind of true, but to a certain degree. You see, it all depends on the amount of pee on the lawn. So, for those of you guys that have like little puppies or whatever, they have a small bladder. And because of that, they, they can't really hold a large capacity of pee. So when they go to pee, they're literally going to pee like small, small divots in the lawn. That's going to be about it. And that's actually going to be just the right amount that it's not really going to hurt the lawn. It's actually going to fertilize it and make it a little bit greener than all the other areas of the lawn. Which isn't good if you're trying to dominate with your entire patch. However, if you have a bigger dog, the bigger the bladder, which means that it can hold a larger capacity of urine, and because of that, when that dog pees, it's going to pee a freaking puddle on your lawn, and thus resulting in areas of your lawn being killed and the pH being lowered and things like that. And this is actually pretty similar to the way that synthetic fertilizer works and why I really don't recommend it in any of my programs. It's very important that you put down just the right amount because putting down just the right amount means you're going to get the added benefit that comes from the fertilizer. Whereas if you put too much down or you try to push the limits, you're going to end up basically hurt burning or killing your lawn or whatever that result is. That's why we tell you guys to use organics all the time because organics, you can go to the extremes and they're not only going to burn your lawn, but with organics, more fertilizer means better lawn. So you can actually put down like double or triple the amount of the bag. I'm not telling you guys to do that, but you can. Sorry if I kind of tired you guys out with my rambling a little bit, but the whole, the whole idea here being is that if you have this going on in your lawn, you have dogs, man. There's really nothing you can do. What's up, guys? I'm Jake the Lawn Kid. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. And in case you guys get this video on Monday, I just want to say I hope all of you guys had a great Easter Sunday with your families. I know I sure am here in a little bit. I'm about to go hang out with my family. But first, I figured I'd give you guys just a little tip. You see, the last time we talked, I was talking a little bit about pre-emergence and when to put those down. And I know one of the main concerns you guys have right now, and one of the biggest barrier to entries is when to actually start putting pre emergence down. So I figured I'd dive a little bit deeper into the topic. By the way, sorry about that. We often get cars that drive by here, so I just got to kind of deal with it. So the biggest concern when you're thinking about when to actually apply things to your lawn for the first time after a cold winter is soil temperature. That's right, soil temperature. Not outside air temps, but soil temperatures. And there's three different ways that you can actually measure soil temperatures to get an accurate reading. The first method is going to involve you having to drive up to your local nursery and pick up what is called a soil thermometer. Basically what a soil thermometer is, is it's a little thermometer attached to a little probe that you insert into the soil about an inch or two deep to get an accurate reading because that's really all we care about with crabgrass because one of the things about crabgrass is we want to get to the shallowest crabgrass first. That's all we care about. So we want to stick the probe in just about an inch into the ground and then within a couple of seconds you will get an accurate reading. There is a more technical way that you can measure your soil temperature but let me just warn you it does involve just a little bit of math. That's right, I got one. My very own lawn journal. So the first thing we need to figure out are the highs and lows of the past three days. 48. 37. Find the total. Divide by 2 for each one. Have the three totals up. Divide the total by 3. And we get about 41.5 degrees. Of course, it's going to be different depending on your highs and lows, but that's what I got right there 41.5 degrees. And if I take a look at my green cast, see that? 46 degrees. So about a 5 degree difference. 
just remember this is a more of a technical way to do it but you will be about five degrees off. And then the third is gonna be what I like to call online soil temperature. In fact, that's exactly what it's called. And this is where I found Greencast soil temperatures. Now keep in mind, Greencast is not a sponsor of the channel. I haven't talked to them at all, so don't worry about that. I'm not trying to make a quick buck here. But anyway, I really like the way that their platform is set up. All you have to do is go to www.greencast.com. I'll leave it in the description below and I'll also leave it in the eye in the top right corner if you wanna check it out. And then comes up this template with a map of your area and all you have to do is type in your zip code and it'll give you an accurate reading of your soil temperatures and where they're at right now. Alright guys, in addition to Greencast, here's another one that I thought was pretty cool. This one's actually called GDD Tracker and it's actually run by Michigan State University here. Again, not a sponsor. I haven't talked to these people or nothing. I just really like the way that it's set up. It's actually pretty cool and this one will actually show you a little bit more in depth optimum times for putting down crabgrass pre-emergence. It'll also show you a bunch of other things as you see here. Um, we'll probably talk about those later, but right now we're focused on the crabgrass pre-emergent because that's the most important application out of everything. And again, I really like the way it's set up. It just shows you optimum times and it'll actually show you down here on a little chart um, as you're coming into the optimum window. Link in the description below. Check these out. So there you go guys, there's four different ways for you to get an accurate reading of your soil temperature. Now stay tuned for next week's video where I talk about crabgrass pre-emergence and how to put those down. With that, I'm Jake the Long Kid, thank you for watching, we'll see you guys next time.